Hello students! In this video, we continue our discussion of infinite series. Particularly, we're going to look at a few more examples of telescoping series. And we're going to throw in some partial fractions too. So let's jump right in and do example two. Determine whether the following telescoping series converges or diverges. If it converges, determine its sum. We have the infinite series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n minus 1. So as in the last example with our telescoping series, we began by listing out the first couple terms of the series. So I want to do the same thing here. So I'm going to first of all write my infinite series, my formula that I'm going to follow. And then I want to list out some terms. So I'm going to take n being 1, I'm going to take n being 2, and n being 3. And I'm going to see what happens. Is there a pattern that develops? That's the cool thing about telescoping series. So we're going to let n equal 1, and this infinite series, that first term becomes, and check my work as I go, 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3, minus 1 over 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So when I put n equal 1 into that series, the first term I get is 1 third minus 1. Now let's put 2 in. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. That's the second term. Let's let n equal 3. 1 over 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, minus 1 over 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. That's the third term. Now this series goes on and on and on and on and on. But what do we see? Check it out. Our terms are starting to cancel again, aren't they? This one-third can cancel with this negative one-third. One-fifth will cancel with negative one-fifth. One-seventh will cancel over here with negative one-seventh, etc., etc., etc. And remember, we want to go all the way till the kth term. So I'm going to let n equal k and see what happens at the end of this series, right? So the kth term is going to be 1 over 2k plus 1 minus 1 over 2k minus 1. And how's this cancellation work? Well, let me go back, let me go back to the beginning here for a second. Notice I have, if I add a new term in, this negative one-third cancels with something before it. This negative one-fifth canceled with something before it. So this 1 over 2k minus 1 is the term that's going to cancel with something before it. And so what happens with this telescoping series? If I take this long sum and I smash it together, I condense it down to negative 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1. In other words, s sub k, or the kth partial sum associated to this telescoping series, is just negative 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1. What do I want to do? I want to determine, does this converge or diverge? So I'm going to let the limit go to infinity, as k goes to infinity, of this sequence, and so I'm going to take the limit as k goes to infinity of negative 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1. So let's now take this limit. We're going to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of negative 1, and that's just negative 1. And then we're going to take a look at the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over 2k plus 1. What does this do? Well, as k goes to infinity, 2k plus 1 goes, grows infinitely, infinitely large. 
And so one over infinity, that grows infinitely small. In fact, right, the limit as k goes to infinity of one over two k plus one, that just equals zero. So that means that the limit as k goes to infinity of negative one over one, negative one plus one over two k plus one is just negative one plus zero, and that's just negative one. That's a finite number, and therefore, this sequence of partial sums converges. And what does that tell us? Well, if our sequence of partial sums converge, that means our original series converges. So let's write that down. The telescoping series converges... Not only do we know that it converges, but it converges to negative 1. And this is because the corresponding sequence of partial sums converges. To negative 1 because the corresponding sequence of partial sums oh hang on a sequence yep converges to negative 1 beautiful so let's look now at example 3 determine whether the following telescoping series converges or diverges if it converges determine its sum this time we have the infinite series n equals 1 to infinity of 6 over n squared plus 2n. Hmm, let's write this series down. So this is the series n equals 1 to infinity of 6 over n squared plus 2n. Huh. Hmm. Before I start to list out some terms, what do I recognize about this series? Let's actually go back to the previous series. Hang on. We'll look at the previous example. In the previous example, we had a series, n equals 1 to infinity, of 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n minus 1. What did we have? We had a difference of two terms. And it was that difference of two terms that gave us this special quality of being able to have a positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative. It was this difference here combined with a pattern that allowed us to cancel terms and make the telescoping series all smash together. So the example we're working on right now, do you see we only have a single term here? So we want to break this up into two terms. How can we do that? Mmm... This is where the idea of partial fractions is going to come in. Why do I think that? Because if I was going to try and integrate this function 6 over n squared plus 2n, what would be the first thing I did? Well, I would factor the denominator and look at setting it up into partial fractions. So let's go ahead. Let's rewrite this using some partial fractions. Hmm, so first step we're gonna have to do is factor. All right, so I need to factor my denominator. So I have six over, to factor this, let's pull out an n, so I have n times n plus two. And we're gonna use some partial fractions now. So remember, this means six over n times n plus two can be written as two fractions, a over n, and b over n plus 2. And so if I do some algebra, I can put these two fractions together, a times n plus 2 and b times n gives us the common denominator of n over n plus 2. And remember, I like to group these terms up. So I have a plus b with an n 
and then I have 2a. I kind of skipped a whole bunch of steps there, but I think you're following, right? So I expand and have two terms, right? The a times the n, the a times the 2, and then I want to put the bn next to the an, and I group them all up. And so when I do that, I'm comparing that to 6 over n plus 2, and so now I set up my equations that correspond. I notice that a plus b is the coefficient on the nth term. And over here, notice there's no n. It's actually 0 n's plus 6. So that means that a plus b is equal to 0. And I have 2a, that's my constant term. 2a is what is equivalent to 6. So I have 2a equals 6. I now solve this resulting system of linear equations, and this one's really easy. 2a equals 6 just implies that a is 3. And now I can back substitute, and so if a is 3, that means 3 plus b is 0, or simply that b is negative 3. And so that tells me that a is 3 and b is negative 3, and so that gives me, right, those give me the values for a and b right here. So now I can rewrite my original series as follows. This infinite series that I'm looking at, 1 to infinity of 6 over n squared plus 2n, is actually simply the series n equals 1 to infinity of 3 over n plus negative 3 over n plus 2. Taking 3 and putting it here, and taking negative 3 and putting it here, is what gives me this series with the two terms. And if I want to rewrite it one more time, notice what do I have? I actually now have that difference that I'm looking for. 3 over n minus 3 over n plus 2. So now I'm ready, now I'm set up in a situation where I can start listing out the terms of this telescoping series. So I'm going to list out my first term, my second term, and my third term, and I'm going to see what happens. So when n is 1, let's see what happens. When n is 1, I have 3 over 1 minus 3 over 3. That's my first term. When n is 2, I have 3 over 2 minus 3 over 4. That's my second term. When n is 3, I have 3 over 3 minus 3 over 5. I think I want to list out a couple more terms here. I think I want to do n equals 4 and n equals 5, just so I can make sure I have my pattern down. 3 over 4 minus 3 over 6, and 3 over 5 minus 3 over 7. So now I think I have enough terms to kind of give me a pattern here. Let's take a look at what cancels. So negative 3 over 3 will cancel with 3 over 3. Negative 3 over 4 will cancel with positive 3 over 4. Negative 3 over 5 will cancel with positive 3 over 5. And how is this working? The second term here cancels with the first term here. The second term here cancels with the first term here. So it's skipping as it goes, right? So that means the second term here will cancel with the first term over here. The second term here will cancel with the first term over here. Make sense? 
But that does leave this term alone and this term alone. Okay, good to know. Let's take a look at the end of this, inf this um, summation then. We're going to go all the way to k. So when n is k, I have 3 over k minus 3 over k plus 2. And I'm also going to look at n equal k minus 1. Because like I said, we're skipping here. We're actually skipping a whole term for the cancellation. So let me also pull in k minus 1. So 3 over k minus 1 minus 3 over k minus 1 plus 2 gives me k plus 1. All right. And I think I want to stop right there. Now, let's look at the pattern again. The second terms, remember, are canceling. We skip a term and go to the next one over. So that means this term here would have to cancel with something over here. That's not going to work. Same thing with this second term here. It would cancel with something over here. That's not going to work. So these two terms have to stay. What about the first terms? Well, the first term in a sequence is canceling with the thing before it, right? So 3 over 3, that was actually coming from something before it. 3 over 4, which is the first of the of the fourth term here, that guy was canceling with something before it. So the first terms are actually canceling with things before it, so that'll go away. This guy is canceling with something before it, so that goes away. And so that tells me that this telescoping series smooshes down and it goes to 3 plus 3 halves minus 3 over k plus 1 minus 3 over k plus 2. And this is the kth partial sum that's associated to this particular infinite series. Now, I'm going to need to continue this on the next page. So let's go to the next page, and we'll rewrite what we have here. So continuing our example on this page, let's write down that partial sum. That partial sum is 3 plus 3 halves minus 3 over k plus 1 minus 3 over k plus 2. All right, and what do we do? We take the limit as k goes to infinity of this kth partial sum, which is simply the limit as k goes to infinity of 3 plus 3 halves minus 3 over k plus 1 minus 3 over k plus 2. And what happens? So let's see. As k goes to infinity, 3 goes to 3. 3 halves goes to 3 halves. And what happens to those other two guys? As k goes to infinity, that denominator goes to infinity here and here. And so we have 3 over infinity. So what does that whole term go to? That whole term goes to 0, and that whole term goes to 0. So what does that leave us? That tells us that this limit is a finite limit. It's 3 plus 3 over 2, or if we like, 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which is just 9 halves. What does that tell me? That tells me that this limit as k goes to infinity of partial sums is 9 half, which means the sequence of partial sums converges, and therefore our infinite series must also converge. So let's write down that result. So the series converges.
because the sequence of partial sums converge the sequence of partial sums converges and it converges both the series and the sequence of partial sums converges to nine halves. Beautiful. So this concludes our discussion of telescoping series. That's all the examples I want to do with you right now. In the next video, we're going to look at that other type of series that makes use of partial sums, namely the geometric series.